Hi, Leslie. Good evening, Connie. How are you today? I'm good. I'm yeah. kind of glad it's Friday. Friday, yep. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm okay, thanks. Good. Hi, Darlene. Hello. Hi, Connie. Hi, Darlene. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good, thanks. You're really relaxed. Really your room what? is so light. Your room looks so bright and nice and bright. It's my living room. And <laughs> so it is. It's a bright time of day in here because the sun goes down behind me. That's a good one. Yeah. So I'm in front of my jigsaw puzzle again though today. Did um, you add to it since we've last talked? Have you made I have a little bit. Yeah, I'm at the hardest part, which is when you have like just, you know, blank white pieces. Oh, ouch. Yeah. 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 Good for so you. It, hopefully I'm not going to be like just making frowny faces all meeting long. <laughs> Hi. If you do, we'll know why. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Hello. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi. This light isn't so bad. So the state, I was, I, I really quick open the, the um, guidelines at the sleep tent. So they basically don't want people to treat. Is that it? That, that is correct. CDC says the same thing. So they consider it a risky behavior. Actually, I, I read it a couple times and I'm not sure that I got the same take on that. I think that they're saying that they're definitely supporting trick-or-treating, but with safety measures involved and in, in making sure that those who are providing candy understand that they would like it to be done in a certain way, that they'd like parents to know how to handle their, their children with trick-or-treating. I don't think it's, I, where was it written that it is not being supported? Yes, Darlene, I apologize. You're correct. They, they did, it does have guidelines for what they are suggesting that people that are giving out candy do, um, you know, follow and what families follow. It just comes in the high risk category. No, and that's actually, it didn't, there was also colored categories and trick or treating was not in. Again, I just, maybe I read it incorrectly, but I didn't feel that even trick or treating was in the high category. I thought it was in a, in a measured category. <clears throat> I don't know, I haven't even read it. I just kind of opened it and just like looked at the first paragraph or so. Yeah. I also, um, I was sent two things from um, Facebook today. Uh, about what um, some other area organizations are doing. So in Lithfield, a whole bunch of the fire department um, have gotten together and they're going to do a parade and give out candy to kids along the parade route, which I thought was somewhat creative. Um, and in at the Sharon Audubon, there's a um, jack-o'-lantern display thing. Connie, can I interrupt you for just a minute? And we might as well just call the meeting to order and we can start discussing things. Good. Um, so I will call the meeting to order at 5.03 officially. Um, okay, can you can. I was just well, passing along that information. I don't yeah, you know. No, that's, that's what we need. I just say it, officially call it to order, so. Mm -hmm. um, um, so did I, I don't know if you got the gist of it. The, sec, the second, so in Litchfield, the fire departments are doing a, you know, a, a drive by where they're going to pass out um, 
candy to to kids and families along a route and they've invited those kids and families to dress up and receive their candy and then um, and at the Sharon Audubon they're doing some sort of a jack-o'-lantern uh, display where they're inviting people to come and add their own jack-o'-lanterns to the display and I, I just you know I'm just passing that along you know just so that we know what other towns are doing and what else is going on. I think the Litchfield thing is Friday, not the Saturday of Halloween. And the Sharon Audubon thing is over the span of several days, um, including over Halloween, but, uh, but even passing into November. Um, on my end, I called, I went up and looked at uh, Kama and if we could use it for a drive through if we decide to go that way, it would be perfect if you go all the way down the driveway and past the food pavilion and you can go around back and it comes out on the other, the closer side of the food pavilion. Um, and it's kind of dark back there with lots of trees and kind of scary-ish looking and should be almost a full moon. Um, there's electricity there, but I do have a call in and I did not hear back from Jim yet. Um, I also stopped in to John Casey's to see if we could use like the back of the green kind of in front of the town hall and around through Zeppa's and things like that. Um, Zeppa building is not being used, but there's lots of construction material and stuff in there. Um, and I just reached out uh, I'll be reaching out to David Schreiber at the club. I tried to reach out to them, but I don't wasn't able to call him yet. Um, but that's where that stands. So I don't have a lot of information except that I still like the drive by or or haunted walking trail idea. Um, we can you know have people sign up, do an Eventbrite thing, have them sign up for different time slots. Um, that's my opinion on it. It, it Cam is the the museum, the this machine museum. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Out back of the Sloan Stanley Museum. I guess I just want to go back to that. I'm gonna just kind of rally again for that. The concept should be. Um, that whatever we do should be on Halloween on Saturday and um, the town also Park and Rec being the representation of the town has always been part of the facilitation of Halloween night and that's whether it's on a Saturday a Sunday or Monday through Friday um, and I think that there's a way that we could incorporate um, a drive through for those who would like to do for safety reasons and not have their youngsters trick or treat, possibly just going back to you suggesting you spoke with John Casey. Maybe there's just, again, decorate the front of the town hall and just allow the cars then to travel right through the front of the town hall and pick up a goodie bag with safety protocols in place for those who, you know, families who choose that they don't want to have their trick or treaters go out. But in support of that Halloween is going to continue to occur, you know, again, there was another trend of Facebook comments and questions and, and it's going to happen on Saturday night, whether there's an active event or not. And I think that it's a measurement of responsibility that we put together something in place to help support those who are used to coming out and trick or treating through Main Street, through Lane Street, through Elizabeth Street. Um, and I just, I don't know whether there's enough manpower or efforts to be able to pull off two different weekends of that. And that's why I'd like to try to go back to putting it on the table that whatever we do, is there a way that we can try to bring it back to Halloween night? And maybe it's just with a sense of it's from four to seven only, you know, so it measures a time frame of safety and and it can be guided. So um, that, that's my, my throw out there. 
Um, my only thing is that I still have a trick or treater. So for me to do the haunted walk trail, whatever, um, I wouldn't be able to, you know, I want to be with him too. Um, and you, and in my idea right now, I feel like Halloween should go off as normal. Um, the one time when kids should be wearing masks and that, um, the haunted trailer walk would be a different weekend taking place of the boo bash that we usually have in the community house. So what will Park and Rec be doing to say that Halloween will go off as norm normal, quote, normal? What will Park, I mean, will you be providing the glow in the dark necklaces for safety? Will we be coordinating the crosswalks as we've done in the past? Um, yeah, I don't know that Park and Rec does more than that on that night. That's, you know, just a townwide event that just always happens. As far as the the necklaces, I don't know if we can just put them out at spots and have kids grab one, or that's up to Leslie, kind of how she wants to handle that, I guess, or not do it at all. Mm -hmm. I'm not really available Halloween night. We could do it the night before. It sounded promising that, you know, that if there were merchants that were participating in um, giving out candy, that they could give out the necklaces on behalf of Park and Rec. So if you wanted to spread them around uh, and, um, you know, the merchants would, uh, if you wanted to just do a favor, you could, you know, share the CDC guidance with the merchants and then the merchants would find a way to, uh, to get the necklaces to the kids with minimal handling as uh, suggested in the guidelines. Right. Um, but that, that the sounds like a, room. yeah, I mean, it, that sounds like an elegant way to solve that uh, issue and to still do that service. Um, you know, I'm, I'm on here tonight to be supportive of whatever the boobash gets replaced by this year and to see if I can help out uh, and, um, you know, and, and I still have a trick-or-treater too, who is very interested in trick-or-treating. And um, I'm, I'm a wait and see or kind of person. So I'm not so sure, but, uh, but I probably would be busy that evening in any case. And I would love to, if we can, like my ideal spot would be up at Kama. Um, if we could get businesses and or groups, the chamber, the land trust, the Lions Club, whomever, um, to set up their own little scare station for the drive through or walk through. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I can hear from Jim tomorrow and hopefully he says yes, or even later on tonight. Um, maybe we can do it the weekend after. Everybody needs a little bit of extra right now. <laughs> oh, I, my kids are college age, so I can help out any night. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really, is, are, do the kids really look, I guess, doing it a different night? Is it, you, do you want to, is another reason you want to do it a different night because the kids are used to having something else besides just Halloween, they, they kind of look forward to that boo bash on a different night? Honestly, the boo bash, we, this would be our third year, and it's mostly for the younger kids. Um, as I've been able to learn about the haunted house and stuff, I was hoping this year to actually encourage more of the public as a real haunted house, um, you know, adults, teenagers, whatever. So. Mm -hmm. It's not, it would, I think it would be a little bit of a disappointment because anything that gets canceled right now is kind of, oh, it's not another thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's, I still want to do it even though there's only two weeks left to do it in unless we do it on that Friday night, then it gives me three weeks. Um, but I would still like to, to do something with it. 
What is Parks and Rec? Does Parks and Rec usually handles the crosswalks on on Halloween? Is that what you were saying, Darlene? We, we no. usually we usually hand out the glow in the dark necklaces, and then the resident trooper um, coordinates the crosswalk part. Okay. And isn't that with your discussion with the resident trooper, Leslie? He usually just does that. He takes care of that. Um, I know Andrew's not scheduled to work on Halloween. I talked to him today. Or no, that was yesterday. Sorry, yesterday evening. Um, you know, I'm happy to hand out glow necklaces if that's what the commission thinks or wants us to do. Um, I know it's a different kind of year, but, um, you know, if we have masks and gloves on and just I don't, them, don't I don't have a problem doing it either. I'll put a mask and I'll put two masks on if I have to. A scary one and a regular one. <laughs> there you go. Although they advise not doing that. <laughs> Good have difficulty breathing, it says. Yeah. I'll put a uh, an oxygen tank on my back. <laughs> you can go as a scuba diver or something. Yeah. I mean, it sounds to me almost as if that's a, you know the what goes on in town is a, is a separate concern. It's a concern. For sure, I don't know if it's the concern necessarily of Park and Rec, um, and there does seem to be some, you know, I, I would I would say that it makes sense to try and do something that is um, along the lines of the Boobash, so that you don't miss a year of doing that. I, I don't think that addresses Darlene's concerns, but I, you know, like I said, I'm not really sure that that's within the, you know, responsibility of Park and Rec necessarily. I think there are going to be parents though that don't want to, that are uncer uncertain like me about what it's going to be like in town that night. You know what we do at the food bank when we get donations? We quarantine them for a few days. I mean, I, I'm de I, it, I, who am I? But I mean, I think I would let my kids trick or treat, but I'd use super precautions and I'd, I'd say we're taking your candy away and it's getting quarantined for a week or whatever, which is overkill. But I guess everybody's gonna do what they are comfortable with. We're gonna let you tell our kids they can't have their candy. No, it's, <laughs> God, I remember how I used to eat so much the first night, but it's better than not doing it at all, I would tell them, I guess. So to try to go back to, because it's really two different things now in hearing that, you know, the, the separate, whatever may be done at camera or whatever, but going back to the responsibility that at least lets our community know that trick-or-treating is going on, who's, I know that people res respond to knowing that glow in the dark necklaces are going to be handed out. And that's their kind of reassurance that it's a statement of, yes, trick or treating is going on, yeah. on, which is now separate from the event that may be planned no matter which weekend. So I guess even just that answer being put out there would help alleviate people asking the question. And it would again allow homeowners in town to make that personal decision for themselves. And I think in fairness, we owe, we, whether it's this subcommittee or Park and Rec, owe that to the community to say, yes, this is what we're gonna do, but please know there's no shame in keeping your light off this year. And that's what we need to let the community know is that we're respecting everybody's decision, lights on or lights off. And I think that would help alleviate some of the individuals personal pressure because they're sensitive to it. There's a lot of residents here on Lane Street, Elizabeth Street and the extension of that take a lot of pride in having participated in over the years. And I think it's our response to them to say, we respect this year if you choose not to. Um, and just take the pressure off of them. And I think that that's something definitely that should be posted and put out through the school um, that that is a statement of how we've opted to handle it. Leslie, can you write something up for that? I can write something up for that. 
Okay. Um, as far as the haunted trail or whatever part of it, I wouldn't say it's definite. I say we're hoping. <laughs> Is there any way to discourage non-residents from coming to the area? Because I know that they normally do that. I think it could even be written in the way how you write it to the community in just utilizing that whole concept of Due to it being a different year, we are really trying to respect that this is being offered to the resident base. I mean, if you get the word out in, in a polite way, I think that's going to minimize at least the outsiders, outsiders, but more than welcome outsiders from coming. If you can, you know, try to guide it as, you know, we're, we're setting a, a tone to, you know, safety and numbers are a concern, so. All right, we'll have Leslie write up something for that. I will hopefully get in touch with somebody and try to confirm a place this weekend. Um, and if I can do that, I think we can go ahead. If I have to wait much longer, I don't think we'll really have time. And we have a lot of decorations and things. And if people, if we can get some businesses or groups to do a station, you know, mm -hmm. that would give them a couple of weeks to set it up. That should be hopefully enough time, but um, we'll do what we can. So this is the work. Go okay. ahead, go ahead. <laughs> No, I mean, it, so what it, it, it will be is just kind of like a scary drive through. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. We can kind of like the haunted house where there's different stations set up. We can do that kind of thing again. And, you know, I, I would like, I mean, if we could get 10 stations, that would be great. If we could use camera and 10 stations, that would be great. I would prefer if, I was thinking a hayride, but then the tractor would be too loud. Um, almost a walk through, because I'm afraid of somebody hitting their gas if they get scared and hitting something. <laughs> yeah. If we have some teenage girls come through or something. <laughs> They're the best, even adult moms. <laughs> I did one of those hayrides. I did the one at Thunder Ridge once and it was really scary. I, I did, wasn't. Go ahead. I'm just afraid the tractor will be too loud over our creepy sounds and everything. Uh, so I, I think that you're going to have uh, an easier time doing safety protocols if you do a walkthrough as opposed to a hayride because a hayride you're you're going to need to limit you know the number of families that are on there right. and you know again I think I think I made this point before that you know then you get people who say well. You know, we're not an individual family, but we're, we are as good as family because we've been together, you know, since the summer. And so you have to make judgment calls. So with a, with a, a walkthrough, you know, you could send, uh, I don't know, four people at a time or something like that. You know, you could, it's going to be much easier to control, I think, who goes because you'll be I talking to them. Yeah, I wouldn't fill up the hay wagon. I would still do it the same way. Um, the groups, the families, like let them sign up on the event right and we would ask them how many is in their family. Um, if somebody, if two families of four have been constantly hanging out together and who are we to say we can't go on it together? I know, but that's the problem because we can't really. And then it's on they go on, it's on and us. then they turn around. Well, it, it's different when the town me? sponsors an activity. So I think that that's your concern, you know, as a town. Excuse me one second. I have to go get a new pen. My pen just died. I'm really sorry. Hold on. <laughs> um, okay, there was one where I thought. <laughs> Sorry. Um, whatever we could we could figure that out and set that up. 
And if, I mean, if there's a family of six, four kids and two adults, and, or if two moms come in with their four kids, the drive-through event would be easier to coordinate um kind of like when you go out to look at christmas tree displays that people have set up in places that you can drive yep. through but you don't have ghouls and goblins jumping out at you this is true <laughs> you guys think you have enough you have enough decorations and stuff um i we have enough for a few stations. That's why I'm hoping some businesses or groups will also do a, some stations. I gotta find my dog. We would do one from the land trust for sure. So you can, you need nine more. <laughs> um, yeah, once I can solidify a place. No, go find Duke. Sorry, excuse me, the dog, dog run next door, ran next door. Yep. Go pick it. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have anything else they want to say? Did, get did back you, together. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you want to approve the minutes from the other meeting? Sure. Um, can I have a motion to approve the meeting, the previous meeting? Anyone? I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. Can I have a second, please? Second. <clears throat> Any conversation? All those in favor? Aye. Yeah, aye, please. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Changes? Thank you. Motion carries. Was there anything else on there, Leslie? I didn't. Um, yeah. No, it was just anything. a discussion of the Halloween activities and um, the meeting day. Um, okay. You know, tip, I just want to get some feedback. Typically, we get 750 necklaces. I'm guessing that town potentially is not going to be that busy this year. Um, Although the glow necklaces are good for a couple of years if we put them away safely. So um, I'm just looking for a little bit input on what kind of numbers we would order if anybody had any ideas. Um, I say since they are savable to get the normal amount and maybe we could use them for something else if we need them, if we need a little something else in three out the year, I don't know. Okay. Do you need them at the at the boobash? Like, if you had a walk through, would you um, would you want the kids to be wearing them? Um, last year when they went through, it was lit enough so you could walk through, but we gave the kids like a little magic uh, glow stick wand or something if they were scared, and that was you know they hold it up to the monster if they're scared, and the monster has to back off. Magic wand type thing. thing. I like that. That's a good idea. And I almost might buy them for everybody because they were all gone by the end of the night anyway, even though they were supposed to be returned. <laughs> Are they reusable? Not really. You can throw them in the freezer and they'll, they'll okay, still work but... for a little while, but you can't repop them. Anything else anybody wants to say? I'm going to try for a meeting on Tuesday or Monday. And do Monday because we've already missed our deadline to warn it. Oh, so Tuesday. That's what I was thinking Tuesday. Uh, can everybody meet Tuesday? Six. Yes. Yes. I think I can, Lynn, but I'm I'm not sure that I don't have something like in the late afternoon. So it may be that the seven o'clock time is is better for me that day. Okay. Everybody good with seven on Tuesday night? 
Yes. Yes. Great. We will see you all back then. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a good weekend. Enjoy During the meeting weekend. at 529. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night.